Hello and a very warm welcome back to the channel of Ordinary Car Review Nonsense. And I say ordinary cars because last year I filmed a Bugatti, a Lamborghini, some Ducatis on my bike channel. But my biggest video by far was the all new Kia Sportage. And lots of you in the comments of that video asked me to compare it to the newest Hyundai Tucson. So hey, guess what I'm doing today? Yeah, we're reviewing the new Hyundai Tucson or newish. It's been out for a year and comparing it to that brand new, shiny and weird looking Kia Sportage to help you decide which Korean SUV you should buy. It's going to be sarcastic and laid back, but slightly informed as usual. Let's go. Here it is in the new Hyundai Tucson. I was going to start this video with a smart ass remark about how you can't actually buy one of these in Tucson because uh, it's not on sale in America, but it is and you can buy one. So um, good start, right? I think it looks quite striking, quite different. We'll get into looks in a bit. It costs from £29,000 here in the UK. It goes all the way up to 42000 for top spec plug-in hybrid. This is a £38,000 normal hybrid, not a plug-in, and it's the ultimate version. Uh, the cheapest hybrid, if you want a hybrid, is thirty-three grand, and the cheapest plug-in is £39,000. Are we keeping up? That's a lot of numbers. It's about £2,000 like for like than the Kia Sportage, so you are saving a tiny teensy bit of money by getting this over the very mechanically and otherwise similar Kia Sportage. Let's talk about engines briefly, and there are some more numbers, I'm afraid. The most normal one is the 150 horsepower, 1.6 litre turbocharged petrol, but there are also mild hybrids, 150 horsepower, 180 horsepower. This is the hybrid, which is a 1.6 petrol with a small one and a half kilowatt hour battery and a 60 horsepower electric motor, which together gives you 230 horsepower through the front wheels, and the plug-in is the expensive one. But there's a train, hang on. There's two trains. Wait, ages for trains, and two come along and frot past each other like mechanical fallacies. The plug-in hybrid is the expensive one. It can do 38 miles on a charge, but it's got 265 horsepower and is four-wheel drive. Uh, there's also a four-wheel drive petrol, but most of them a front wheel drive and there's also a mix of manual and automatic gearboxes depending on what engine you go for but all of the hybrids are automatic and there is no diesel right engines done let's talk about the looks you've got these weird led headlights which kind of sit in the grill there they've gone off now but i'll stick a shot in of these all lighting up down here it looks like the spread wings of a bald eagle i think other types of eagles are available near unionizing to talk about the monopoly of the bald eagle but yeah i think it looks really quite striking and when you see one of these at night you can't mistake it for anything else and it has an extra light which just lights up when you turn into bends as well because this is the top spec one or top spec ish you also get 19 inch alloys on this one and the whole car is 20 mil longer than the old tucson it's uh, 5 mil taller and 15 mil wider while we're looking at the side there are two things I don't like about it on the side. I'm not a big aestheticist, but it's got too many folds in it. It's got all these kind of creases down here. It looks like a sheet of screwed up paper that's been straightened out again, which is probably some fancy design language. Another thing that has annoyed me is it's really easy to get your fingers caught in there like that. Um, my girlfriend did it first and I thought, oh, you've got tiny hands, maybe it's down to that. But then I did it as well. So you can give yourself a blood blister pretty easily if you're not too careful. And I've never had a car injure me in quite the same way. I do like this silver metal strip here and it is metal. It's cold to the touch and it just adds a bit of je ne sais quoi, or whatever the Korean for that is, down the side of it. Round the back, you get these shark fin brake lights, which just look awesome. Uh, you still get a visible exhaust, which is a bit weird. And you get this kind of diamond creased plastic there, which looks like the leather on the inside of the doors of a Bentley Flying Spur. The Hyundai badge is 3D, but it's recessed behind plastic. And there is a rear window wiper, but it's tucked up there and swings down like a horse's willy. Uh, yeah, hybrid badge to show it's the hybrid. Let's look in the boot, which is full of rubbish, warning. 
beeps at you, like every good Korean car. The boot, excuse all of my baby crap, is 616 litres, uh, 560 in the PHEV because of the bigger battery. The normal petrol one is 620 litres and 577 in the mild hybrid. And all the boots are about 20 litres bigger than in the Sportage. Let me take that out. There you go. You can actually see it now. Yeah, it's big enough for a big buggy and a kid's bike. Very, very badly packed and just chucked in. And it is more than big enough for doing very, very pooey nappy changes. Ask me how I know. Right, enough about the boot. Let's check the back seats out. Before we do the back seats, actually, I should point out that you can park this from the key. If you get a posh enough version of this car, you can hold buttons on the key to move it forwards and backwards when you're outside of the car. You kind of have to prime the system from inside before you hop out, but I'll stick a shot of it doing that. It's quite fun. I think BMW 7 Series did that five years ago and that cost a hundred million pounds. Right, the wheelbase of this car is longer than it used to be and you get 26 mil more leg room, uh, loads of room for child seats, but it's still a medium sized SUV. And as you can see, medium sized does mean that my freakishly large two-year-old can kick the back of the front seats and get them all really muddy. So it's not absolutely ginormous inside, but I'm gonna jump in and show you how a six foot three adult looks in the back. Yes, I fit just fine. That isn't actually my driving position because it does that thing where the seat moves forward and backwards when you turn the car off and on. So that's all the way back and I've still got knee room and when I hop in, it actually goes forward. I've got headroom despite having a panoramic sunroof and the rear bench reclines and goes forward. So you can get a bit more comfortable. Uh, there's not much of a tunnel in the middle of the floor. I could go back to my old car wild days of going like that. But I think it's a thumbs up for the middle seat. Hopefully that's not copyrighted now. You've got two USB A's down there, normal USBs. And if I shut the doors, it doesn't feel claustrophobic. And I've got little sun blinds. Oh, look at that. That's probably a top spec thing. You probably don't get that on the regular Tucson's. And I've got a piddly little door bin, but it's big enough for a single water bottle or fruit shoot or equivalent. But yeah, it's really quite nice back here. Even if I lean back, I've got loads of headroom. But let's go up front and see what it's like up there. Up front, the Hyundai Tucson looks pretty modern. It's got twin 10 inch screens. It's got one for the instruments there. So you get digital dashboard and it's got one there, which is very similar to the one in the Kia. However, this annoys me a little bit more than the Kia because these buttons here, they're all really tiny to go between the different menus. And it's very easy to rest your hand on this bit when you're trying to use this. So you accidentally change the screen when you're trying to use that screen. Uh, the Sportage has just got a better setup. It's got a little row of uh, dual mode buttons along the bottom and they're just a bit more physically separated. It's a little niggle, but both me and my other half have spanned ourselves into different menus when we were trying to do something else. The steering wheel is just a plain old round thing, but it's perfectly good. And there's a button there yeah, which you will want to do because it's an absolute pain in the bum when you're driving along. Gear selector stuff is all there, along with buttons for heated steering wheel, heated and cooled seats, that kind of classic Korean thing of giving you both in vaguely affordable cars. Got two USB A's under there and a wireless charging mat, which works really quite well. Things I don't like about this that I haven't listed, doesn't have wireless CarPlay, you have to plug in for it, which is just a little bit annoying. There's a little bit of cloth across the dashboard, which I quite like the look of. I like these swoopy vents that almost continue around the cabin. But in general, I prefer the new Sportage's interior. Sorry, Hyundai. I'm not sorry. I'm here to criticise cars. Uh, you've got a big old cubby in there as well. Very exciting. I should point out this has got an upgraded sound system because it's a top spec one, and that is by Krell. I thought that's what whales have for breakfast, but it is pretty good, really bassy and it sounds just really quite pleasant. Oh, there's also a central airbag. I don't know where it is, but it swings down to prevent the driver and the front seat passenger bashing heads together in a side impact. Right, that's the end of the walk around -y bit. I don't know what that was. Let's jump in the front seat and take the Hyundai Tucson for a drive and see if it's as good as the Kia Sportage or Sportage. I got told off by a very angry man for saying Sportage, despite the fact that's how 95% of people in the UK say it. Goodbye in a second. Right, let's go for a drive in the new Hyundai Tucson and I'm probably going to show you one of its most annoying features. No, it didn't do it. It usually bongs like absolute craziness every time you do anything. If you open a door, if you do a fart, it just bongs at you constantly. And the Kia Sportage does it, but not to quite the same extent. And there is a lot of tech on this car, which I'll talk about, which does 
Some of it helps, some of it annoys. It bongs at you when the car in front has moved off if you're in a queue of traffic, which is helpful if you've been playing Bejeweled on your phone or whatever the latest craze is. Um, the lane keeping assist is really intrusive. Again, there's a button to turn it off here. And yeah, it, it, it bongs a lot. But anyway, let's press D. It bongs when you press D and go for a drive. And um, yeah, this is just the normal hybrid. Now, I don't actually know what the driving range of this is. It's not going to be far because it's only got a one and a half kilowatt hour battery. It's not designed to do 30 miles on electric power like the plug-in hybrid. But you do get a little green EV symbol on the dashboard, which lights up when you're not using that 1.6 litre petrol engine. Um, and even when you're cruising at like 30, 40, you can be on EV power alone. And it all works together really seamlessly. So it's not a big jolt. But if I do put my foot down, you didn't <laughs> do then here uh, the petrol engine and it's not that noisy really it's slightly thrashy sounding and it's not like you're doing lots of miles on EV so you're not really surprised when it kicks in but yeah the hybrid system works really well however I've done lots of mixed driving trying to be a normal driver not a hooligan journalist and I've only been getting 40 miles per gallon which I bet a diesel version, if they did one, would do 50, 55 miles per gallon without breaking a sweat. But I know diesels are now bad, so, uh, we, so we can't have one. But anyway, um, the steering in this, it's really light, it's really easy. Might be too light um, <laughs> for some people, but around town it just makes it easy to park. The mirrors, they're big, they don't make a lot of noise, so we'll get onto some motorway driving in a bit to test that. And you can see out the back really easily. It's, uh, it's got little windows in the C-pillars so you can see out over your shoulder quite easily. It's a very nice family car to live with. The gearbox is holding onto a gear a little bit too long there. So you kind of got your foot on half throttle and it's going, Aah! don't think it's a CVT, but sometimes it does feel a little bit like one. But by and large, you mostly notice the hybrid system working when you boot it away from a set of lights because it's quite quick, not to 62. I know it's not really relevant in a family SUV, but it's eight seconds flat or slightly quicker even. And that's faster than the 265 horsepower four wheel drive plug-in hybrid. So if you want the fastest Tucson, if that matters to you, which it shouldn't, uh, the regular hybrid is the way to go. I've prattled on enough. I'm going to get some dual carriageway, do some 70 mile an hour driving, then get to a twisty road and I'll tell you how it handles like a race car. It's not like a race car. It's like a family SUV. <sighs> Right, I'm about to go from a 50 mile an hour limit up to dual carriageway 70 mile an hour, which is the UK motorway speed limit. Um, and we'll see how the Tucson copes at 70 miles an hour. Is it deafening? Is it going to get around this little corner? Uh, yes, yeah, it's quite roly poly this. I'll get onto that on the country roads. But yeah, let's beans it. 60, 70. Right, that's 70 miles an hour. I am in eco mode. There are two modes, a sport and eco, and I'll do sport in a bit but most of the time you're just going to leave this in eco mode and at 70 miles an hour there's actually a reasonable bit of wind noise off that mirror uh ignore what i said earlier uh yeah that's a little bit noisy and um, some tire noise but really the thing that i notice having got out of a uh, sportage recently is this just feels a bit firmer but not in a very pleasant way the suspension it feels the whole car feels a bit heavy on its suspension so when you go over kind of big lines in the road if they're quite severe jolts you'll get a really bad jolt in the cabin and that roly poliness i spoke about i noticed it more at the weekend when i had my two kids and my other half in the car with me uh, my girlfriend's phone was flying out of her lap when i was going around corners quite gently there was just something about this that feels i don't know makes every corner feel like a bit of a palaver uh, but as i said we'll do some more cornering in a bit Otherwise, you'd be able to do big motorway miles in this and everyone would be comfortable. It's just I've noticed these little firmnesses and that noise compared to Sportage and a few other things that I've driven recently. But in isolation, this is perfectly good. And again, I said earlier, the sound system's really good. So long journeys with your podcasts or your tunes will pass in a flash. Hopefully not the flash of a speed camera because that'd be naughty. Right, twisty roads. Right, I'm about to get to my twisty roads. Obviously, you don't buy a Hyundai Tucson for its sport mode, but I'm going to explore it because it's there and actually there's no one behind me. So let's see how quickly it gets up to speed. I uh, probably shouldn't be doing launch control in a Tucson hybrid, but you know, you only live once, don't you? I don't think it's got launch control. The shuddering traction control. 
torque steer, weirdly, and that is 60 miles an hour. So it's actually reasonably brisk, but it's quite a lot of noise from under the bonnet. It kind of weaves a little bit of torque steer. Uh, the electric motor does work through the gearbox, so that goes to the front wheels, all that extra torque and 60 horsepower of electric power. I'm going around the corner, the speed limit, and it, it's all right. It's all right. It's, it does lean a bit and it's rolly, but you know, it's a family SUV. It's designed to maximize comfort more than anything else, but it gives you the confidence to go down a road at 60 miles an hour when it's allowed. So yeah, it's just that firmness sort of makes sense now, but it's still just not as comfortable, I don't think, as the Sportage hybrid that I drove just before Christmas. And this sport mode is just making the engine rev a bit more. And it's not particularly nice sound. It gives you more throttle response, so it feels quicker. But really, just leave it in eco mode and don't get the red dials. Ooh, they look quite cool and flamey. Uh, it's got grip, yep. Goes around corners. It does what you need it to do. Obviously, it's not a sports car. Um, but yeah, there we go. When you need to drive it reasonably quickly, you can. Um, I just wish it was more comfortable over those little bumps. <laughs> right, that's probably enough irrelevant stuff about how the Hyundai Tucson drives. Back to you, Tim, for the best outro you've ever done that definitely won't take six takes in the freezing cold. I'm quite surprised this doesn't bong at you when you put it from sport into eco mode and vice versa, given that this car does have more bongs than Snoop Dogg. So, in conclusion, what do I think of the new Hyundai Tucson? Well, in the week that I've been living with it, it's performed brilliantly as a family car. 95% as good as the Kia Sportage. I do slightly prefer the Kia, though, because I kind of like that really futuristic look. This is almost a little bit traditional, but only in comparison, it still looks nuts for a family SUV. There are some niggles with it, though. The hybrid system works really well, but I've still only been getting 40 mpg out of it, which isn't great, it's all right. Um, the ride is a little bit firm over bumps, it can be a bit thuddy, and because the interior is so nice, that kind of intrudes a bit more than you would think. It doesn't have wireless Apple CarPlay, same as on the Kia, which doesn't have it either. But yeah, it's really good, it's really roomy, it's got a big boot, it's a bit cheaper than the Kia. Loads of good reasons to go and buy one of these, and I think it certainly is more interesting than a Volkswagen Tiguan, probably cheaper as well. So yeah, if you prefer this, the way this looks, go and buy this over the Kia. If you prefer the Kia, go and buy that. Sorry, it's not very insightful, but there's really not much to split the two cars. Now, if that was helpful, hit like on this video. If it wasn't, also hit like and subscribe so I can annoy you more in future with bad videos about cars. And I'll see you next time when I won't be in a lay-by with a Hyundai. Oh, actually I will be. That's what I've got next as well. I've got the Ionic 5 again. Anyway, stay tuned for that.